last chapter apparently is a chapter with we have to talk about lead and follow the communication within a couple the making of a beautiful dance couple by a man and a woman who know exactly their roles to explain lead and follow is very very difficult because it's based on the sensitivity of both partners but we have a few basic rules which we could follow and which could be practiced First of all, how does a man initiate to move forward or initiate the lady to move backward? Now we will watch William and Alessandra showing you the three phases of doing it in the correct way. Now, as I said in another chapter, in the chapter two exactly, the hands have a certain kind of tone. If the tone is slightly released, the lady will get that release and she will answer by taking her belly button backward. So she will go away from the center. So first phase is the release of the tone in the hand. The lady going on phase two with the belly button backward and phase three, the man follows the lady's center before there would be gapping. So you have one, two, three. So we see that in a closed hold. So through that, the lady is never attacked by the man's body. If the man decides to move backward, he will start with phase two. He will leave the hands with the lady, takes away his belly button, and the lady will fill the gap. So that's what we see. The man starts his belly button, the lady fills the gap. And through that, nobody attacks the other partner. Actually, just this communication leads to the point where the lady doesn't have to know the choreography. She will follow because his initiative movement is very, very clear. So as you saw it now, can I just borrow you? And she does not know if I'm going forward or backward. We stand here and I make clear through my center or I make clear through my center again. Whatever I want to do, I can to allow the lady to go her direction. Now this is a communication without any kind of muscular effort. Another thing which is very, very important in lead and follow is to tell the lady how to step outside. Now there's a basic rule for that as well. Preceding every outside step, the man has side lead. Side lead, of course, we use in several dances anyway, but it is definitely the entry to an outside step. Let's see it when we do a feather step. William and Alessandro will dance a feather step. We have the rotation to the right to create a side lead. Turning to the right creates side lead and the next step automatically is outside partner. Thank you. Well, let's do another example. An open natural turn in the waltz from promenade position. Can we see that? Because that finishes with a side lead to continue with an outside step. Open natural turn, side lead and outside step as a next step would be the consequence. Now if we could see please one reverse weave of waltz, then we would see how we do it in a reverse turn. Could we do that probably from there, a reverse weave? And you will see by under turning between two and three, we reach also a side lead. The side lead is now. So the lady goes outside. So she doesn't have to know the steps. An interesting step to experiment with that lead is the extended reverse wave in the foxtrot. Now, in the original book, we find it is a back feather, which means the lady steps outside. Now, Bill and Bobby themselves liked to dance it in line because they felt more together and they felt that the amount of rotation between the left and the right movement would then be around about the same. Now how can the man give that information to the lady? If he does a back feather with a correct outside step, he definitely has to lead a side lead in order to make the lady to step outside. If he doesn't want her to step outside, he simply doesn't turn as much to create a side lead. Let us check an extended Wave. Of 
course, the thing with lead and follow is that one partner moves earlier than the other one. Under the normal circumstances, this reaction time that the lady needs to transform the information into her own movement is not visible. So it looks like they're moving at the same time. It's within the couple. Sometimes a man can choose to make the reaction time visible for effect. We have two examples for you. They're both from the tango. One example is the so-called checked natural pivot. Let's watch the checked natural pivot in slow motion leading into a stop lock. It is a pivot which is not finished, changing direction drastically, going the other way for a stop lock. Unfortunately and very wrongly, very often, this has been referred to as a lunge roll. Now a lunge roll can't that be because then the man would follow the movement. He doesn't do that. He leaves the lady in her position and moves out earlier. Now if he does the same action and he does it fast, you will see the reaction time of the lady. So that action looks very much like he's putting her into a lunge, but he's actually doing quite the opposite. Can we do that one more time? That's quite impressive. And he moves away. And you see the time she needs to react and follow him. Another step which is very famous and was, let's say, one of Bill Irvin's favorite steps is a Spanish drag in the tango. Now the Spanish drag's action for a man is a lowering in the right knee combined with a turn to the right, transferring the weight to the left and regaining original position. So it's lowering, moving to the left, regaining position. Done in slow motion, it looks perfectly together. Now if William chooses to do that in an abbreviated time, you will see the reaction time from Alessandra, and that is that effect. So very often people think it is the man throwing the lady away, while in reality it's quite the opposite. The man moves away from the lady. So one more time, I think the Spanish drag, which is a fabulous step in character of the dance.